disciples came to him, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming? This is Signs of the Last Days Ministry, where we connect the conditions and events happening in the world to the biblical prophecies and help the dear followers of our Lord Jesus to watch and pray for his coming as he commanded. And events are happening now in the world that are manifesting signs of the last days prophecies, showing we are nearing the end of this age and the coming of Jesus. They're happening just like the Bible said. The Bible prophecies foretold how that the nations of Israel and Russia would become intertwined together in the last days. First, the prophecies of Ezekiel chapter 37 and 38 foretold how that Israel would be miraculously resurrected by God as a nation in the last days. And that prophecy foretold over 2,500 years ago happened in the 20th century just as the Bible said. And then after that happened, the Ezekiel prophecies also foretold how that the aggressive descendants of the dominant tribe known as Magog in the book of Genesis, who settled around and north of the Black Sea in what today is called Russia, and led by a strong leader of Russia called the Prince of Rush, would be in the last days to become at the mountainous northern border of Israel. And that prophecy over 2,500 years ago is also happening now, just as the Bible said, just one generation or 70 years after Israel was reborn as a nation. It's amazing how real the Bible and its prophecies are and how faithful the God of the Bible is. And now today, the Russian military is patrolling the demilitarized zone between Israel and Syria in the Golan Heights. After Russia's success in Syria with their intervention in the civil war there, also under the, the Russian military control is the crossing on the Golan Heights border between Syria and Israel, which Russia says they are now reopening. The fact is that the Russian military now controls the northern border of Israel. And as reported in the UK Telegraph, they have established a permanent presence there with four bases and plans to establish more. On the ground today, the Russian military controls the border of Israel. However, previously Russia did not control the skies and Israel flew sorties into Syria against the Syrian regime and Iran with impunity. But now that is changing to where Russia can not only control the ground, but also going forward, they could also more control the skies from Israel's northern border. Because now Russia has put into Syria their S-300 air defense missile systems as part of the Russians hitting back at the Israelites with military measures after the Russians blamed Israel as responsible for the downing of a Russian military plane killing all 15 aboard. The Russian S-300 air defense missile systems are sophisticated. They have sophisticated electronic warfare capabilities and now Russia with Syria can electronically monitor, identify, jam, and attack aircraft, missiles, drones, and even satellites in the skies over Syria, the Eastern Mediterranean, Lebanon, and Northern Israel. And Russia is not putting these sophisticated, sophisticated weapons there into Syria and then just turning them over to the inept Syrians to where another case of mistaken identity and attack could happen again. Reports at Debka and other news sites are saying that these modern weapon systems will be unified into an automated control system of the Russian armed forces and linked not only to the Russian air base in Latakia, Syria, but also integrated into Russia's own C-3 military central command control and communication system. That's a big deal. 
Here is additional background on Russia's delivery into Syria of these systems, why it was done, how they will be integrated into Russia's own military defense system, and how Russia will now help repel any Israeli aggression into Syria, making Syria and Israel the front line for a potential hot regional Middle East war. An S-300 air defense system and dozens of pieces of additional military equipment have been delivered to Syria. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu reported to Vladimir Putin on October 2nd. The supplied equipment includes four S-300 launchers, radars and control vehicles. The Defense Minister said that the training of Syrian S-300 crews will take about three months. An integrated air defense network is set to be established in the war-torn country by October 20th. Russia is already delivering equipment and training to Syrian servicemen for this purpose. Shoigu pointed out that the Defense Ministry has already boosted the electronic warfare capabilities of the Russian forces deployed in Syria. Russian forces are monitoring the main directions from which strikes on Syria have been carried out within a range of up to 200 kilometers. That all HQs of the Syrian Air Defense Forces SADF, will be equipped with better automated process control systems, which are only supplied to the Russian armed forces. This will allow a centralized control of SADF units across the country to be established, will lead to a better integration of Syrian and Russian military assets operating in Syria, and provide the SADF with better targeting information. According to Shoigu's statement, Russian EW systems will suppress any communications, radar and satellite navigation of combat aviation involved in attacks on Syria from the eastern Mediterranean. Shoigu recalled that Russia had frozen S-300 supplies to Syria in 2013 at Israel's request, adding that now the situation has changed. In any case, the supply of S-300 systems will further affect the already shifting balance of power in the Middle East, particularly in Syria, where the Assad government and its allies, Russia, Iran and Hezbollah, de facto achieved victory in the hot phase of the conflict. The Russian decision to supply the S-300 systems to the Syrian military was a result of a series of events which started with the incident involving the Russian IL-20 reconnaissance plane of the Syrian coast on September 17th. The plane, with 15 servicemen on board, was shot down by a Syrian S-200 air defense system, repelling an aerial attack by the Israeli air forces. Russia decided to take a series of direct public steps which are designed to assure the safety of its troops in Syria and to boost Syrian air defense capabilities, thus further limiting the influence of the Israeli-US bloc in the conflict. While it's unlikely that the Russian military will be publicly involved in repelling the Israeli strikes on Syria, it will take some steps under the Syrian flag. These may include providing the SADF with additional intelligence, as well as the means for measures to repel Israeli aggression, further supplying the modern air defense systems to Syria, coordination of the SADF efforts to repel Israeli strikes through their military advisors embedded with the crews of the Russian-supplied air defense systems, Considering the current level of media hysteria in Israel and the US, and the complicated situation in the region caused by the ongoing standoff between the Israeli, US bloc and Iran, the rash and hostile actions of Israel and Syria once again put the Middle East on the verge of a hot regional war. This is a strategic game changer in Syria for the Israelis to where they are now not faced only with local, low-tech missile batteries with Syrian operators, but are faced with the same defense system that protects Russian cities in the Russian homeland with the entire Russian military networked into that defense. There are no more free passes for Israel from Russia. No more freedom of flight and operations over Syria without a real severe potential threat against them. The operational environment, no matter what Israel says, has changed. That was why Israel before had always requested that Russia do not put these kind of systems, as modern as these are, into Syria. But now, because of what has happened, Russia has put them there. Now Russia can exert more influence and control not only in the ground, on the ground, but also over the skies at northern Israel's border. And it also further positions Russia 
to leverage down even more on the Israelis to further accept Russia as the guarantor of the security of Israel's northern border. So to get from Israel what Russia really wants, which is for Israel to stop strikes into Syria. For the Russians could also tell Israel that since Russia now could exert control over not only the ground, but also the skies at their border, this will also help to protect Israel's security. So if Russia were to have success in getting Israel to stop strikes into Syria by further convincing them to buy into Russia's promises to ensure the security of Israel's northern border, Russia will come off with a big win-win, looking good as the protector of Israel, the restorer of Syria, and the guarantor of peace in this Middle East region which is perfect positioning for the Ezekiel Gog of Magog prophecy complete fulfillment. This status would further produce the environment foretold by the prophecy for what it says will further happen. For the Ezekiel prophecy foretells that Israel will be in a posture of trust, not expecting any coming aggression, thinking they dwell safely. But then the prophecy says that this prince of Rush will have evil thoughts and an evil plan of treachery against Israel, looking at them as an easy opportunity to take advantage of a land rich with resources. And it could be that Israel may continue to take some actions in the region that continues to tick off Russia. It was just reported that since Russia put the S-300 air defense missile systems into Syria, that in response, the U.S. will now provide additional F-35 stealth planes to Israel to counter these systems, which will upgrade Israel's electronic warfare capabilities. This could also make Israel think that it is more safe. But there will be no shortage of encouragement by Russia's allies, as Iran, Turkey, and others, that Israel is the problem in Middle Eastern issues with them hooking Russia into turning on Israel, while recurring economic challenges at home for the Russians and the tempting plum of resources in Israel's northern mountains and also offshore, looking like an easy target for a sudden land grab like they did in Crimea, could also play into Gog of Magog's thinking. Additionally, there will be no shortage of pretext that Russia can use as justification for crossing the border into Israel. They could claim to come as a liberation force for the Palestinians and to solve the Israel problem. Or Russia could more likely claim they are merely fulfilling UN mandates to return the entire Golan back to Syria, which was captured by Israel in the 1967 Six-Day War and then annexed by Israel, which was not recognized internationally by the UN. Russia is fully invested in backing the Syrian government of Assad, and they thus far have not hesitated to support them in retaking territory so as to restore Syria fully. And only a few days ago at the UN, Assad's foreign minister of Syria said that Damascus aims to recapture all the Golan Heights, just as it has recently reasserted control in other parts of Syria with Russian backing. To think that a surprise move by Russia against Israel could happen under the pretext of fulfilling UN mandates to restore all of the Golan Heights back to Syria would not be overreaching. Using such a pretext for invading an unsuspecting Israel and given Israel's worldwide lack of popularity and support, along with Russia's widespread support from Arab Islamic nations in the region. And as the prophecy says, with, re with Russia initially only opposed by diplomatic protests from the U.S. and Western allies, an aggressive Russia, full of success thus far from their Middle East plans, will calculate that they can get away with it. But the Gog of Magog prophecy says in Ezekiel 
that it doesn't work out well for them. For the promise he says that when they cross over and go into the northern mountains of Israel, they meet someone they did not expect. They meet the Lord God of Israel from the Holy Scriptures, who is furious with this invasion into the land of Israel, which is a land God has placed the promises of his word upon. And the promise he says, the Lord God of heaven and earth commands nature to destroy there the forces of Gog of Magog and their Arab allies with a great earthquake, landslides, flooding rain with great hailstones and even fire and brimstone. The prophecy says the destruction is so horrific and complete that it takes Israel seven years to clean it up with fires. This is what happens to Russia and its Arab allies as Iran and Turkey when they invade Israel. And after God destroys the forces of Gog of Magog and their Arab allies in the mountains of Israel, the prophecy also says in Ezekiel chapter 39 that additionally, God causes fire to be sent onto the country of Magog itself and also on those described as who live in security in the coastlands. This seemingly describing that the Gog of Magog event can trigger ramifications which expand out into the world with consequences of fire coming down on Russia and other countries, perhaps through such as an exchange of nuclear missiles by countries as they respond in retribution to the attack on Israel. Then perhaps it could happen. With the world horrified with the results of this Gog of Magog event, which had Israel at its center, that it could cause a worldwide outcry for peace and safety. So that the events from this Gog of Magog prophecy are a precursor resulting in conditions in the world that could lead to the beginning of Daniel's 70th week prophecy in Daniel chapter 9. Now this 70 weeks prophecy foretold future major prophetic milestones concerning Israel, the Messiah, and the Antichrist, saying these things would happen within a special overall time period which was divided into three segments, with the last segment being a future final 70th week or seven year time period which foretold the signs of the prince who is to come who will become the Antichrist in the last days. And the sign given In Daniel chapter 9, that the final 70th week or final seven years of Israel and the world's prophetic destiny has started is when the prince who is to come, who will become the Antichrist, confirms a seven-year covenant or treaty with the leaders of Israel and other countries in the region during a time that 1 Thessalonians 5 says is when people are crying, peace, and safety. For after the Gog of Magog prophecy event, with with Russia and its Arab allies being beaten, broken, and devastated, with their resulting humiliation complete and resistance removed, there could suddenly be a huge leadership, huge leadership power vacuum in the Middle East. And with the world horrified with the results of this Gog of Magog event, which had Israel at its center, it could cause a worldwide outcry for peace and safety. This could set the stage for the European Union political and religious superstate to fill the void in the Middle East after Russia, who is now providing that Middle East leadership and Middle East domination, is removed out of the way. And this European Union superstate could fill the void in the Middle East as the one political, religious, economic, and military power in the region whom the world is willing to turn to for peace that can be accepted by all sides to facilitate an agreement with Israel and others in the region for peace and safety. And from this, 
emerges a dynamic and powerful leader from this revived Roman Empire who can facilitate and confirm an agreement with Israel and the necessary parties, which the Daniel chapter 9, 70 weeks prophecy says, restarts the prophetic time clock for the final seven year period of the end time. And from the results of the Ezekiel Gog of Magog prophecy, the way has been paved as an entrance ramp for end time events that leads to the Antichrist and Israel in the final seven years at the end of this age. No doubt, the first three and a half years of that seven year agreement starts off euphorically with the world celebrating the coming of peace and safety with the leader who brought it being adored and elevated to world leadership, given the authority to implement his plans accepted by the world since they promised to bring world order and security to all on a global scale, while Israel is rebuilding their temple in Jerusalem and restarting their practices of Jewish worship as agreed to in the treaty. But then, at the midpoint of the seven-year agreement with Israel, three and a half years into it, things spiral downward as pride, anger, and corrupt power turns this world leader against Israel. And this world leader manifests himself as the Antichrist, breaking the agreement with Israel, stopping their Jewish sacrifices, and declaring himself as God in their Jewish temple, thus committing the abomination of desolation. The Antichrist is fully revealed to the world at Jerusalem, marking the world entering the final three and a half years of the wrath that comes upon them from God and what Jesus Christ foretold as the Great Tribulation. With the Antichrist leading the world into the final three and a half years of mankind's government of the world through the worst time of trouble and war possible until it comes to an end at Armageddon. This is important to realize that of all the last day's prophecies giving off signs pointing toward coming fulfillment, the Gog of Magog prophecy has in recent times been one of the most active, spinning off signs indicating this prophecy's coming occurrence. It's also important to understand that signs are symbols that communicate to us as we travel in time to a future prophetic event, just like road signs as we travel on a highway to a destination. Signs can tell us the destination or event we're headed to and signify for us when we are near to reaching the destination of the event. This is just like what Jesus said about the signs of prophecy in Luke the 12th chapter when he spoke to the multitudes about discerning the times of prophecy. Jesus said there that just as the weather gives off signs that a rainstorm is about to arrive with the storm clouds gathering, so it is also with discerning the signs of prophecy fulfillment. The prophecy gives off signs of coming fulfillment as it draws near. And this Gog of Magog prophecy in Ezekiel seems to be exhibiting such characteristics with significant directly related events happening with the exact actors the prophecy calls out at the specific location the prophecy says it will happen and with signs happening at a rapid pace indicating fulfillment could be closely approaching. And perhaps this Gog of Magog prophecy that is giving off so many signs indicating its preparation to occur in the world could be the precursor to ramping up end time prophetic events paving the way for the Antichrist to fulfill the 70, the 70 weeks prophecy of Daniel chapter 9. The signs of the last day's prophecies are happening at the very borders of Israel as foretold. That's why it's so incredibly important to have a prophetic ministry and to support it like this one that's connecting what's happening in the world to the biblical prophecies, helping you to watch and pray for the coming of Jesus for the signs of the last day's prophecies are happening. 
You see, the prophecy foretold thousands of years ago that Israel would be restored as a nation in the last days, and it happened in this generation. The prophecy foretold thousands of years ago that Russia's military would become to be on the border of Israel, and it has happened now. And all the rest of the end time prophecies will also happen just as the Bible says. And the signs of the prophecies will come together quickly and their fulfillment happens suddenly. But for now, it is a time of grace when everyone, no matter of their age, race, nationality, belief, or whatever, they can, through Jesus Christ, be born again spiritually into the kingdom of God, as Jesus commanded in John 3, and as his apostles described in Acts, the second chapter of the Bible. So that as Jesus said in Luke 21, whosoever will may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass by being born again into the kingdom of God. And everyone that will is invited by Jesus Christ, who the Lord Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, who truly sets people free to be transformed through the power of the Holy Spirit and name of Jesus Christ, bringing them into the completeness the kingdom of God has for each and every one of us. Now is the time to take decisions and actions for Jesus Christ in our lives because today is the only promised day, the accepted day of salvation. The signs of the prophecies will happen quickly and the prophecies will come together quickly and be fulfilled. We are living on the cusp of major end time prophecy fulfillment and the time that we have to be ready and prepared for the coming of Jesus, to ensure, to examine ourselves and make sure that we are in, in the kingdom of God through the blueprint that Jesus Christ and his apostles gave us in the book of Acts. The time to examine ourselves and make sure of our salvation is now. And by assuring ourselves we are born again into the kingdom of God, then life eternal in the kingdom of Jesus Christ of which there shall be no end, shall be ours forever. It's our prayer you were blessed by this ministry today, as together we are getting ready for the coming of Jesus. And we want to continue to be a blessing to you, so we will be back here again in another broadcast of The Signs of the Last Days Revealed. Also, you can go to the ministry website anytime at signsofthelastdays.org where there are free articles and videos you can enjoy anytime. And there's also free content on our Signs of the Last Day social media channels on Facebook and YouTube, just like on the website, signsofthelastdays.org. Now in a moment, we will speak a prophetic blessing over you from the eternal word of God. For we are thankful how God is blessing this ministry as we are now reaching into cities and areas all across the United States and the Lord has blessed us to reach into over 40 countries now around the world. And what makes all this possible is the support from the Lord and his body of Christ in the world as you who give to God in this ministry. So to bring all these broadcasts and content to bless you and other souls around the world. The Bible says we live in perilous times of the last days when the world will become selfish as lovers of themselves and lovers of money, despising those doing good for God. But we have not so learned Christ, for Jesus gave us his principle of giving as God's way of supporting his work of ministry and in turn blessing his people as they do so. Jesus said in Luke 6 to give, and it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. When you give into the work of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, you receive his greater blessing in return. That is so much more than that which you planted into the kingdom of God. Pray about going to the website, signsofthelastdays.org, and there securely giving an offering of any amount, and you can also become a monthly partner, faithfully supporting this work of ministry of God. 
giving each month to help proclaim the signs of the coming of Jesus in these last days. As we continue to reach out to all these countries around the world and into all these cities and areas across the United States. You can also get as well a, a resource on the website which you can get there that will bless you and the proceeds also go into supporting the work of the ministry and as Jesus said you will receive a blessing that is running over. Now let's speak a prophetic blessing over you from the eternal Word of God. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you and declare your prophetic word. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord put his name on you and bless and lead you. Blessed you shall be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord open to you his good treasure and bless all the work of your hands. The Lord make you the head and not the tail. And if any speak evil against you, may the Lord turn it to a blessing. The Lord cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. And the Lord establish you to walk in his ways and make evil to be afraid and depart from you. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now receive the blessing in Jesus' name, and we agree together and say, Amen. Remember, the last days are the end time for an unbelieving world, but for the born-again followers of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God, they are not the end, but the beginning of a beautiful new future in Jesus Christ.